name is Jessica. I am a full-time pharmacy student, a part-time chemistry tutor, as well as a part-time um, pharmacy intern. Basically what I plan to do with this channel is to bring you guys reviews of products. Um, I will show you how they apply and how they look and feel and that kind of thing, but also I plan to go over the ingredients within some of those products and talk about whether they will actually do what they claim to do or if there are potentially hazardous ingredients in there in any way or anything that could be potentially chemically or pharmaceutically controversial about the product. So that is what I have come here to do and I am sitting in front of this camera and it is very strange. Anyway, <laughs> is Tarte Amazonian Clay 12 Hour Full Coverage Foundation. And this has an SPF 15 sunscreen. Now, um, it claims a whole bunch of things on the box here. Let's see. Water, mineral pigments, vitamin E, sodium hyaluronate, and Amazonian clay. And it says it's formulated without parabens, mineral oil, phthalates, triclosan, sodium lauryl sulfate, or synthetic fragrance. So, um, right off the bat, some of the things here that it's claiming it's formulated without. So, parabens. Everybody's all upset about parabens um, because there's been some controversial research surrounding them. The deal with parabens is that particularly methylparaben has showed up in breast cancer tissue. So we know that methylparaben is naturally occurring. It can be found in blueberries. Um, it's an antioxidant. It works as kind of an antimicrobial agent in blueberries. Um, but Outside of that, we're not really sure what its effect on the body is. From most of the studies, they have shown that it's practically non-toxic. Um, there's no real observed risk at this time, but um, a lot of people find it worrisome that it, methylparaben has shown up in breast cancer tissue. So it's unclear right now if there's a direct correlation between one and the other. Who's to say that it's coming from something like this, but it is something to keep in mind when you're purchasing products. The skin is the largest organ in your body, or at least on your body, so um, it's just good to be aware of the things that you're putting on your skin. It does look like there, there are no parabens. Parabens and antioxidants act as preservatives, so they will prevent the product from changing color, oxidizing to kind of an unpleasant smell, that kind of thing. So products that don't have parabens oftentimes will um, have very short shelf life. They will expire easily. You have to ask yourself then, well, what is the antioxidant? There's got to be some kind of antioxidant in here or else it would expire very, very quickly. So as for the antioxidant in this one, um, it's going to be kind of a modified version of vitamin C or ascorbic acid. So down here on the list there is tetrahexyl decyl ascorbate. So that is a modified version of vitamin C that enables it to dissolve in oils and lipids so that it can um, you know, better mix in with this makeup here. So that will allow it to have a longer shelf life and act as the preservative for this makeup. So phthalate? They've been super controversial. There is some evidence that phthalates can cause adverse effects in children's health as well as um, adults. There's some suggestion about um, breast cancer, that kind of thing. What we do know is that the FDA and the CDC have sort of set a, what they say to be a tolerable limit for phthalates and in most children um, that are tested, especially in urban areas, since phthalates are easily released into the environment. The tests on basically urine samples showed that they were significantly higher than what is recommended for phthalate levels in the human body. And we do take in too many according to those recommendations. So, you know, having some additional phthalates to put all over your skin, I guess, isn't really something that you would want to do. Phthalates in general, I'll have to do a little bit more research into and come back and let you guys know what I've found. But right off the bat, um, controversial, leaning towards health risk, I would say more so than parabens, um, good thing to avoid. I suppose um, another important claim here is that this uh, this Amazonian clay 
that they're talking about. The ingredient there is going to be kaolin, which is just a naturally occurring clay that's found in the earth. Clay is often like an ingredient in kitty litter and that kind of thing because of the way that it absorbs. Um, it has the ability to absorb moisture. So this um, product would be good for people who have oily skin, um, people who need some sort of oil control, moisture control, um, as well as probably it would hold up pretty well in hotter climates, more humid climates. So that's good. The clay does exist. <laughs> the Amazonian clay truly is in here in the form of kaolin, so that's good to know. And then another really important part of this product is the sunscreen. As you can tell, I'm very fair, so sunscreen is very important to me. The two sunscreens that you have in here are a combination of titanium dioxide at 6%, as well as zinc oxide at 3%. These are both physical sunscreens. They're made up of minerals, zinc, and titanium. Um, and these are basically ground up into a powder and put into here as a sunscreen. So the physical sunscreens act as kind of a mirror to reflect light off of the, the little granules of the mineral. Physical sunscreens are great for a lot of reasons. They don't absorb into your skin. Um, there's no hormone disruption um, that can occur because of these. They just sort of sit on the top of your skin and reflect the light away. If I were to pick any two sunscreens that I would want in my product, it would be these two, so that's great. So, and then sodium lauryl sulfate. I am particularly irritated by, and I mean physically, not emotionally, by sodium lauryl sulfate. This is something that whenever it's in a shampoo, I break out, and it is usually in the form of little tiny red bumps that never really come to a head. They just sort of line my forehead and around my jaw. Sodium lauryl sulfate has proven to be pretty comedogenic. It is something that, from what we know anyways, will clog your pores. To be honest with you, not so sure how many other um, foundations I have that do have sodium lauryl sulfate in it but this one does not, and that is good for me. One ingredient that I have sort of been looking into is this potassium chloride here. The only problem that, from what I've read, is that people have issues with it clogging their pores. Potassium chloride is introduced to increase viscosity, so it's a thickening agent um, to keep the, the product from being super runny. I um, have pretty acne-prone skin. I um, use topical isotretinoin, so retin-A. I haven't noticed anything really with um, that in terms of an issue so overall I think that um, the ingredients in here really aren't too bad there's nothing really that sticks out to me and I say wow that's that seems pretty dangerous I'd have to agree with the claim that it with the high performance naturals um, while there are some chemically derived ingredients in here there are quite a few naturally occurring ingredients um, so that's good. I think that they do, um, for the most part, live up to their claim. I think that this Tarte foundation um, does live up to what it says, for the most part. There are non-naturally occurring ingredients in here, but from my understanding, you're going to find them in nearly every product unless you were to go to Lush and buy something that is completely natural with no preservatives. It's going to expire in a week. So thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.